today, welcome to the Chai Academy. I'm Rabbi Sachs, and um, we've been exploring Jewish ethics and beliefs. Each class, by the way, is uh, self-contained, so therefore, if you missed the previous class, it, it's it's fine. Um, the previous class was actually an interesting one. Um, when bad things happen to good people, it's a class I recommend. Um, and you can find it on the chaicenter.com forward slash academy. So the um, the class today is going to talk about the hierarchy the hierarchy in, in Judaism. Is there a hierarchy? Um, in fact, um, what is the hierarchy if there is? And um, and and it's it's a very it's it's actually a very beautiful and interesting concept. Hi Eileen. Um, you see, the answer to the question is is there a hierarchy? Is yes and no. Um, let's start with the yes. The yes is that there is there is such a thing as a Kohen. A Kohen is a priest. A Kohen um, is is um, a Kohen is a a um, person that that we 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 give the first, we, when we call up to the Torah, he gets it first. Um, just just um, and there's other things. I mean, he worked in the times of the temple. He worked in the holy temple. So there's definitely um, you know we give we give we we show reverence to the Kohen. There's also the Levi, which also served in the holy temple. He's the second one to get called to the Torah. And then there's the rest of the Israelites. So the Israelites pretty much comprise of 90% and the Kohen and the Levi 5% each. Um, so, but, but we give credence, we give respect, we, we uh, allow them to talk first, we, we, we don't, we, we try to not have them serve us a meal. So it just, just interesting stuff. I mean, it's, 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 this is not, this is not the worst thing if they do. Um, so there is that type of, type of hierarchy. Um, and, you know, we did, we, we did have a, in times of the temple, we did have a king. There was a king. So the, the uh, king was, um, obviously, when he walked into the room, you stood up and he's the king and he, what he says goes, etc. And if you go against the king, you, um, you, you, you know, you could be, you could be put to death. But, so that's, that's yes to the hierarchy. However, the, 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 um, the no to the hierarchy is, is that there is, nobody is better than the other. There's no one person who has to do more because of whom they are. So you have in Christianity, for example, you have, um, you know, the, the, the um, Catholic, I'm not a connoisseur, but the Catholics. What you have is the is the priest remains celibate, but the congregation constituents, the deacons and etc. don't have to be. So there's that divide. Um, you have, um, you know, so the the priest dedicates his life and doesn't have children, etc. And, and and but the rest of the, um, um, the you know the rest of the. the the rest of the, and so there's different rules for different for different folks. In Judaism, there's no such thing. You you're either practicing or you're not practicing, or you practice some, but nobody has the obligation. Nobody has the obligation to to um to. Nobody has the obligation to basically say that I, um, I am obligated to do more than you're obligated to do. I notice people going in and out. Is there a problem with this? Uh, is there a problem with this? This stream here. Um, so no, no, yeah. So nobody has the obligation to to to, to do more or less. It, it's we all have to do the same. We either practice it or we don't practice it. You know, somebody keeps kosher, somebody doesn't keep kosher. The one that doesn't keep kosher, it does not mean, say, well, I don't have to keep kosher. But rather, but rather, the, the, um, the, 
it, it, it is, yes, everybody, kosher is kosher, kosher is kosher, and some people do it, some people don't. Likewise Shabbat, and likewise every other, every other thing we have in, in, in Judaism. So, so there is, there is no hierarchy in that respect. And um, that's, you know, there's, there's, that's true with all, with all, all laws. Now, to prove the point, I think there's, there's um, a fast, we, 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 in the Torah last week, we had a fascinating um, discourse between, um, um, we had a fascinating discourse between Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, and Moses. So what happened is Jethro, the, the, the Hebrews came out of Egypt, right? They came out, God split the sea, and now they are ready to receive the Torah. They're, 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 they're living in the desert of Sinai, where the Mount Sinai was located. And what happened? Jethro comes. He lived in Midian, and he comes to visit his son-in-law and to bring his grandchildren back to Moshe and to bring his wife back to Moshe. Because while they were in Egypt fighting for survival and fighting for freedom, Moshe's wife and daughters lived with their father and grandfather respectively. So Jethro comes and there's hugs and kisses. It was pre-COVID um, and they, everybody had a meal together without any masks and they, they, um, they celebrated. The very next day, when Moses was sitting to answer questions, to, to settle disputes, to, to, to review Torah, whatever it was, the commandments, Moshe was sitting and there was a long line of people to, to visit Moshe and, to, and get, get their questions, get their issues sorted out. Jethro, Jethro takes a look at this and Jethro says to Moshe the following, it's a direct quote in the Torah. He says, Lo tov, it's not good what you're doing. It's not good. You're doing a, a, um, a disservice to have all these people stand in line waiting to talk to you. Novel tibol. You're going to wear yourself out and not only are you going to wear yourself out, you're going to wear the community out. So everybody is, is, is going to be worn out. And then Jethro says, this is what you should do. Delegate. Set up a, a system of delegation where you have heads of thousands, heads of ten thousands, heads of thousands, heads of the five hundred, heads of one hundred, heads of ten, right? And if it's something that, that cannot be sorted out by these, these others, then they'll come to you. It's almost like we have in the United States, right? We have, we have a, a, a court system, a, you know, a, a, and it eventually goes up to the Supreme Court. So Moshe, you're the Supreme Justice, Court Justice, and, um, and Moses, they'll come to you. And, and by the way, the United States, it's interesting, the United States is, is, is a whole system of delegation. Not every minor problem goes to the president, right? Um, it, it, you don't go to the president to say that you know we, we, we've you know we we've run out of uh, you know room in the grocery store in 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 uh, because people are not buying. Or, you know you go to every things are settled locally, so. You know, we have, we have on the county level, we have the town level, we have the state level, you can have the village level, right? You can have, um, you know, corporate villages, really, really local. Um, and then you have the town, and then, then you have the, 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 um, then you have the country level, the, the federal government, et cetera, et cetera. And the buck stops by the president. But, but you don't go to the president for every, for every uh, you know, silly little thing that you need. And that's what Jethro, was telling Moses. So the obvious question is, Moses, a man who spoke to God, pe'al pe', mouth to mouth, 
he spoke to God and and, and, it, and he didn't just speak to God um, in a trance or as a prophecy where he was uh, semi-conscious and, and uh, or, or, or re be able to read between the lines of something. No, when Moses spoke to God, Moses spoke to God one on one. So the great Moses never thought of middle management. The great Moses never thought of delegation. The great Moses didn't see these long lines and realize there's a flaw here. Instead, just let it go. And it took, it took an outsider, Jethro, who was related, so he wasn't so nervous speaking to, his, to the leader because it was his son-in-law, to say, this is lousy, this is lousy government. What you're doing is, is low tov, it's not good. Where was Moses in this? Where was his brain? Where was his thought? What, what, was, he, what was he thinking? So we'll, we'll, we'll suspend that, that question for the moment. There's another fascinating story in the Torah where the, the Hebrews complained about the manna. The, the Hebrew nation, when they came out of Egypt, were, were extremely, extremely um, sensitive, insecure. They, they were complainers. They had slave mentality. They, 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 they couldn't fight their way out of a paper bag. And they used to complain a lot. So, when it came to the manna, which was a gift from heaven, every single day manna fell, it was like a coriander seed, fell from heaven, it used to grind it up and became flour, and then you could, you could make, um, yeah, yeah, right, you can, you can, um, you made whatever, whatever it is that you wanted to make, etc. with this flour, it was very versatile. But the people complained, and they said, ah, oh, we remember the food that we ate in Egypt. Now, in Egypt, there were slaves. They were beaten. We remember the food, we remember the fish, and we remember the meat, and we remember, they probably didn't have meat. Fish, yeah, the Nile. Um, why do we have to eat this manna? So at that point of time, Moses lost it. And Moses said, Moses said, I am, I'm done. God, take me, I wanna die. I just want to die. I'm out. Right? I'm finished. Now, Moses wasn't the only one who ever said that to God. You think of Jonah the, you know, the, and, the, and the whale. After the story of the whale, Jonah says, God, take my life. It's not worth living. Um, Jeremiah. Jeremiah's comment was, I wish I would have died in utero. Right? That was his comment. Um, after what witnessed the destruction of the temple. Um, Job, right? So this, this Moses wasn't the only one. But Moses says, you know, kill me. Just, you know, stick a knife and I'm done. So God said, calm down, calm down, calm down. What we're going to do is we're going to delegate. We're going to choose 70 people plus you, so there's 71, and that will be the Supreme Court. And instead of people complaining directly to you, they will complain directly to them and to get the big cases, capital cases, you're gonna need 20, 20 with three and, and uh, about 21, and bigger cases you're gonna need, you know, if you wanna put the king on trial, you need 71, et cetera, et cetera. What's interesting, by the way, in Judaism, just parenthetically, to kill a human being, you need 20, a, a Supreme Court of 21 to convene. To kill an animal that was dangerous, to put down an animal, you know how many you needed? 21. You could not kill an animal, just say, yeah, condemn the animal to death, unless you had 21 judges who, who said you could. Fascinating to me. So the, the, um, God said, Let's, we, need, we need to set up a, 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 we need to delegate. We need to set up some type of delegation. And they did. And God told Moses what's going to happen is these 70 people are going, these 70 people are going to get prophecy. So they're not, it's not going to be left up to their judgment, but like you, they're going to have prophecy. So 70 people were chosen 
And then something strange happened. Two prophets, two, two people who were not part of the seventy, started to prophesy. Right, so the seventy prophesied. They, the seventy were in, but two, for whatever reason, we don't know the reason, were caught up in the moment, and for somehow they ended up under the shadow of the other seventy, and they prophesied. Now Moses, Moses's prize student Joshua, was upset. He goes, "They have no, they have no authority to be prophets. God chose the seventy. Who are they?" So he runs over to Moses and says, Moses, there are these two characters, Eldad and Medad. Two guys, probably brothers. You know, it's, it's like you know, Eldad and Medad, they, they gotta be, you know, they gotta be brothers. Incarcerate them, incarcerate them. Because this is terrible, incarcerate them. So Moses looked at Joshua and Moses says, incarcerate them. I wish everybody had prophecy. Joshua, why are you bothered? Can you imagine everyone had prophecy? How great that would be? So no, I'm not gonna incarcerate them. I, I'm, 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 I welcome them, I, I, I embrace them. I'm not gonna incarcerate them. So we see a little bit of, of Moshe's philosophy here. Moses did not care that there were two people prophesying illegally. Moshe thought it was great. Mo Moses was anti-hierarchy. Completely. And Moses, by, by standing in line, by standing, by sitting and having people stand in line, is he was sending a profound message. It may not have been practical, but the message was very, very clear. I don't care who you are. I don't care what your complaint is. I don't care if you have money or you don't have money. I don't care if you're a scholar. I don't care if you have body odor. I don't care. Everybody has the right to stand in line and speak to me. I, it's not, well, if you make a you know, ten thousand dollar donation, then you can make an appointment. Or if you are well versed in this, that, and the other, then I'll I'd love to have this scholarly debate with you. No. M Moses says everybody is welcome equally to stand in line, and there's no hierarchy. There is no there is no um. I'm not going to say you come first because you're this. You come first because you're that. Everybody waits in line equally. And, um, and and that was that's a, such a beautiful sentiment. However, it wasn't practical. It took Jethro, an outsider, to say, "I understand what you're trying to do, Moshe, but it's it's low tov. It's not good. It's not practical. It really isn't. You're gonna weigh yourself out." So I know you want to do this. I know you're committed to this, where you won't eat or sleep until the last person is seen for the day. But there is another way to view it. And Moses did it because he asked God permission. And Jethro said, ask God. And God gave him permission. But it was with, with reluctance. Now, there's a reason why Moses was reluctant. A reason. And we go now to another verse in Deuteronomy. In Deuteronomy, one of the last verses of the entire Bible, of the entire Torah, there's a line there. Torah, Tziva, Lanu, Moshe. The Torah that was commanded to us via Moses, Meirasha is an inheritance to the congregation of Jacob. That the Torah, the Bible, we receive as inheritance. Inheritance is a very, very funny thing in Jewish law. I, I, and I don't know civil, I'm not a lawyer. But in Jewish law, um, these very, very, very wealthy parents were killed in a car accident. And you have the only remaining survivor is this two-month-old baby. 
So the executor looks at the will, looks at the bank account. He says, well, these people left, right, $43 billion. $43 billion. That was their net worth. The baby gets the money. You don't say, oh, well, it's just a baby. So the baby gets the money. Right? If, if it's in the last will and testament to give to, to this and that, that's one thing. But all things being equal, the baby gets the money. It doesn't matter if the baby understands it, but it doesn't matter if the kid can talk. doesn't matter if it, it nothing matters. The money is the kids. It's the kids. Oh, but the kid doesn't know. So what? The kid doesn't know. It's an inheritance. Inheritance, so therefore it's an inheritance. It belongs to the kid. The court can appoint a guardian until 18, right, etc., etc. But it belongs to the kid. It belongs to the kid. It's the same way with, with, with Torah. Nobody, not one person can say, I am, I have authority over the Torah. Right? Therefore, I'm right, you're wrong. The Torah belongs to me and doesn't belong to you because you don't practice it. You don't keep it. It's not true. It's not true. The Torah belongs to everybody as an inheritance. And therefore Moses wasn't just going to, um, um, it, 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 he wasn't going to just say, okay, well, you know, you can have it, you don't, you don't deserve, you. it's not a matter of deserve. It's a matter who owns it. Who owns the money, in the case of the baby, who owns the Torah? And the answer to the same question is Marasha, it's inheritance. So therefore, Moses' philosophy was that I have answers for them, and, and, and if I'm going to answer one person, for me to say, no, yo, you go to someone else, is a slap in the face. It's marginalizing someone else. So Moses said, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to speak to everybody equally, because they all have the right to have their questions answered equally. Equally. And that's what he did until God gave him permission to stop doing it through the initiation of Jethro. So to me, this is this is this is a fascinating thing. Where no, nobody uh, there's no way I can I can say I, I'm I'm better than you. Um there's no way I can say that that I'm I'm um you know, my my uh, my portion of the Torah is larger than your portion of the Torah. I can't say that. I can't say that. No Jew is better than another Jew, and that's the message Moses wanted to convey. Not better, just simply not better. Absolutely not. I remember when when the when the Lubavitcher Rebbe was alive. So starting, I think, in 1985, maybe in 86, um, he, st he started to give out. He started to see people, but albeit very quickly. Basically, you walked by him, you got a dollar bill, and you asked for a quick 10-second blessing. The Rebbe blessed you. Sometimes the conversation took 20 seconds, sometimes 30 seconds, rarely ever. But you waited in line. You waited in line. And when I went to, to, to the Rebbe, I went as a rabbi, I went in line. I went as an individual, I went in line. I went to, to get a blessing on the day of my son's bris, have this newborn baby here together with my wife, I waited in line. Right? So they may have put if a king came to visit, may have ushered him ahead, or some other VIP diplomat, maybe. But everybody else waiting in line. So you wait in line an hour, 
you wait in line two hours. If you, you know, if you if you got there early enough, you can wait in line ten minutes. But if you got there late enough, you could be there for four hours. Until so you have your chance to speak to the Rebbe. And it's the same idea. The Rebbe's not going to stuff, you know, 13 other, 1,300 other people in front of you because you're a nobody. No. The Rebbe didn't view it that way. Nobody's a nobody. Everybody's a somebody. And that's the way Moses looked at it. That's the way we need to look at it. And, and um, if, if, you know, it's almost like we gave a class we, we spoke about is is my blood redder than yours, um, and and um, and it's the same idea. Nobody, nobody can say, well, you know, I'm I'm better than you, so therefore I get to live, or I'm better than you, so therefore I get to drink first in in this 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 drought. It doesn't work like that. And the fact that the Torah tells the story is because the Torah that's the message. That's one of the messages. The Torah is teaching is. No aloofness here. No aloofness. Right? We can agree to disagree about who, who, who um, you know, whether the, what time the baby was born and therefore what day the bris is and try and figure it out. No, well, I think it was this, I think it was that. But we can't, we cannot, we can't disagree and say, I'm better than you. Right? Now, are there people that are scholars? That we go to for questions. Yeah, that's the other message we learn is that we, you, you go to the scholars. You have a question about Judaism, you go to the scholar. And the scholar, um, if he doesn't know the answer, better say I don't know the answer rather than make up an answer. And the worst thing a scholar can do is 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 um his twist and 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 warp the, the correct response. Right? The scholar can say, well, there's a multitudes of opinions. Right, but if it's clear, black and white, right? The, let's take the Torah says you cannot put meat and milk together. So someone says, "Is this considered together?" And if it's black and white, and it says, "Yes, this is considered together." But Rabbi, what do I do if it's a piece of cheese touching a beef patty? Do I have to throw everything out? Now we can talk because it's not intermingled. I can tell you what to do. But if it's intermingled and, 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 and the rabbi says, well, you know, um, it's wrong. You can't do that. The, the Jewish law has a mechanism. If there's 60 times more meat than milk or 60 times more volume, then, then, then it's nullified. But that's if it's completely enmeshed. But if you can take it out, take it out. So, so, so if he warps it, if the scholar warps it, that that's that's lowest of the law. <laughs> if you take if you take a law and and you twist it and turn it and and and, and modify it or make it non-relevant, that yeah that, that that you've degraded yourself. Nobody's degraded you. You degraded yourself. But otherwise, we're all equal. So, I uh, we're all partners in this world together. We all got to get through. And, um, and get to heaven, right? And, um, and we gotta live the best possible way we can live. And nobody, nobody's blood is redder. Nobody has, uh, just because a person has a better IQ, doesn't make them holier, so to speak. All right, point driven home. God bless, please feel, please feel free to share.